Whoa, look at that. Proper shiner, innit? One nil to David Platt. This is Jason's handiwork. Your pathetic little slap barely left a mark. Yeah, well, you would say that, wouldn't you? Put it this way. Ricky Ann's got nothing to worry about. Yeah, yeah, you have a nice day now. Grow up, yeah. Hiya, yeah, uh, my name's David Platt. I'm just ringing to confirm a visit for today. Gail McIntyre. 1.30. All right, cheers, thanks. Bye. Ah. <laughs> Look at you with your poncy salad. Honestly, you kill me. Of course, uh, you're more of a pie man yourself. Yeah, I'm just on my way to go visit Mum. Yeah, well, uh... Give her my love. You know what I should take in for her? A life-size cardboard cutout of you. Just to remind her what you look like. I'll tell her go and see her and I will. Yeah, when? No, just in case she asks. I don't know, as soon as. Yeah, sorry, there's like half a sentence missing there. Soon as. Oh, maybe uh, sometime next week. I bet Mum's really grateful you're supporting her like this. Yeah, well, someone's got to. And for once, it's not about me, is it? Mum needs me, and I'll be there. End of. Oh. Hi. You all right? Yeah. Not so bad. You're looking a bit better. Well, I gave me hair a wash, put on a bit of lippy. Made me feel a bit more human. Nice one. So, um, how have you been? Well, I'll not lie to you. It's, uh, it's not been easy. No? No, but I've decided to take a view. How does that work? Well, I have to accept that I am in here for now. There's nothing I can do about it. All I can do is wait. David? Has something happened? I know it's worse for you, being in here, of course it is, but I'm waiting too. And it just got to me, you know, like really got to me, that I thought, I can't sit back and do nothing anymore. What have you done? Don't panic, it's no big deal. David! I went up to the lakes and I tracked down that couple, you know, the ones who said, so you get on the boat. Be so stupid meddling with witnesses. You make me sound like some sort of pervert. What if the police find out? They did. They've already been round. Oh, great. No, it's all right. They just give me a slap wrist. It's bad enough being in here as it is without having to worry about what you're up to as well. Look, Mum, I'm sorry. I only did it because I wanted to get you out of here. What else am I supposed to do? Sit round twiddling my thumbs? Look, I know it's hard, but I will get out of here. We just have to wait for things to take their course. That could be months. Then so be it. We have this system for good reason. I have every faith in it. Why do you have to be so reasonable? To remind myself who I am. So I don't end up like this lot. Either railing against the system or just completely giving up. Fair enough. So that's everything? Nothing else you need to confess? No. Everything's fine. It's like they say, every cloud has a silver. What's it? And over every hill, there's a... something or other. Kirk, are you trying to cheer me up? No. Good. Because I haven't got a clue what you're talking about. I'm trying to cheer myself up. I think it's working and all. Oh, great. Sure, we can get us a pint, eh? Gah, mate. Sorry. Got stuff to do. Thanks for listening, though. Same again. Sorry about yesterday. I thought it was me that was meant to say that. I mean, for holding you back. I'd have loved to let you thump him again, but I don't think Liz be too pleased. <laughs> yeah, well, don't worry. I'm not here to kick off this time. I'm here to get drunk. So I noticed. That's OK. You can pay me at the end. Save me all those trips to the till. Can't stand by this.
here. Might know. Is that really going to solve anything? Nope. But it makes it a lot more bearable. Right. You sit here feeling sorry for yourself, and when you lose your job, you really will have something to feel sorry about. Can you just leave me alone, man, please? No. <sighs> OK. I'm going. Here, I'll keep the change. Oh, actually, uh, you owe us 80p. Never mind, it's on me. Cheers. Yeah, mate. Well, there's nothing to do without them, huh? You, you don't know who it is yet. Well, I do now. In which case, I hope you'll adopt a different tone. Go away, please. I knew you were in, you know. Clever you. Look, look I have every sympathy for your situation, but you, you must appreciate mine. I, 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 I can't run that shop single-handed. Oh, I'm sorry, I need more time. How much time? I, I can't keep your job open indefinitely. Fine! Don't, then. Who cares? <sighs> Tina, Jason's had an accident. Well, oh. what's happening? Look, it's not serious. He's just banged his head. I see. The, the trouble is, it's affected his memory. You are. It's short term memory. He still thinks you and him are going out together. What? Well, what am I supposed to do? Marry him? It's just that if you bump into him, just be gentle with him, eh? You're making this up, aren't you? I wish I were. Where is he now? He's having a lie down. Right. Tina? Tina, wait! Well, he looks all right to me. You're up. Yeah, I've been asleep for ages. I won't sleep tonight if I didn't go up for a bit. What are you doing here? Well, I heard you had an accident. Minor accident? What do you care? Well, Eileen reckons that you lost your memory. You've got me a new spot. Hey, of course not. What are you talking about? Well, obviously his memory's come back. My me memory? I never lost my me memory. Is this some weird scam to try and get us back together? Because it's failing <sighs> miserably. No, I was just hoping you'd treat the situation with tact and... and... Oh, sympathy for a change. Well, it's not my fault you can't take a hint. Oh, I can take a hint, all right. Oh, don't I worry don't, about that. I don't need this. What's that about, ma'am? What are you talking about? Well, you've obviously forgotten that you've lost your memory. Ma'am? Oh, lovely. What's this place done to you? Hmm? You sound so cold. I sound cold because of the things you said last time you were here. Not because I've turned into some tattoo. Tab smoking out. Yeah, I know I shouldn't have said any of those things. I feel really badly about it. You feel bad? My own mother practically lining up with a prosecution. I know, I could cut my tongue out, honestly. It's just. Uh, this, it's such a lot to deal with. It's no barrel of laughs from this time. I know, day. I know. None of this is coming out right. <laughs> How about we start again? Yes. I bought you some flowers, but they wouldn't let me bring them in. <laughs> flowers? <laughs> well, brings flowers on a prison visit. Well, pardon me for not knowing the etiquette of what one is supposed to bring to one's wrongly imprisoned aunt. Thank you. They said I'll have to take them on. Not for the flowers. Saying wrongly imprisoned. Yeah, I didn't wallop her. Just gave her a little slap. She got me that mad. So who is this, Louise? <sighs> oh, well, it's just a friend, really. Well, he must be more than a friend if you slap slapping Rita around. Blimey, I thought some of the women in here were rough. <laughs> Come on. Who is he? He's just a friend, as I said. Yeah, all right, I like him. 
Oh, God. Listen to me jabbering on about family. Ma'am, believe me, a bit of old-fashioned gossip is exactly what I need right now. Don't change the subject. This fancy man of yours. What's he like? Is he too afraid of him? Well, uh, he's in the hospitality industry and uh, very good at what he does. And very good looking. Now there's a surprise. <laughs> Did you get you some magazines? Oh. You went to get some news this morning. Yes, I did, but um, I, was, I was way laid. Funny word, that, isn't it? Way laid. Could be a Geordie talking. Way laid, man. Or, or someone's lucky day. Way! Yes, it's all right, Natasha. Hiya, Gran. Hi, darling. Look, I, I just wondered if... Uh... Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hello. <laughs> I just wondered if you were going to see Mum this week. I was planning to, yeah. Oh, good. Uh, I thought maybe we could go together. Oh, yeah, that would be great. It's so much easier when there are two of you. OK, well, just uh, tell me when and I'll sort it out. Thank you. Bye, then. Bye, John. Bye. Bye. Hiya. Are you stalking me? Escorting you. Where are we going? The cabin to get some magazines, and I don't need escorting, thank you. Just being gallant, you know, walking on the outside in case a carriage comes by and splashes you. There aren't any carriages. Well, if there was, I'd get a cloak and cover the puddles for you to walk on. <laughs> you haven't got a cloak. I could get a cloak, just say the word. Bye. Hiya. Hi. You've got lovely hair. Thanks. Just being a hairdresser, it's what you notice. Hair. <laughs> I suppose if I was a dentist, I'd notice teeth. And if I was a cobbler, I'd notice shoes. And if I was a doctor, I'd notice if there was anything wrong. I'm talking too much, aren't I? Uh, not at all. Nice seeing you. Let me cut it for you. Uh, <laughs> sorry? Your hair. Let me cut it for you. I don't mean now, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I carry emergency scissors on me. It's not like anyone ever calls, is there a hairdresser in the house? <laughs> More's the pity. It doesn't need cutting. OK, then. I'll style it for you. Um, I'll even give you uh, an Indian head massage and I won't even charge you. You can't say fairer than that, can you? No, you can't. OK. Really? <laughs> I'll pop in tomorrow. <laughs> Nick might go for a bit of colour. Oh. oh, I can't be doing with this. I am an artist. I don't judge hair, I reinvent. Oh, Natasha, sweetheart, you hardly even know my grandson, and already you're trying to change him. Women don't change men, we improve them. Yeah, well, a lot of tried and failed with our Nick. Really? Don't get me wrong, absolutely adorable. Oh, I love him to bits. But when it comes to relationships... He's a handful. I just think you ought to know what you might be letting yourself in for. Oh, so you're not trying to put me off? Oh, I long since given up interfering with my family. No, as long as it doesn't interfere with your work, love. Be my best. Afternoon. Oh, hi. Well... What are you doing here? Well, I found myself in the neighbourhood and suddenly desired your company. Oh, thank you for... You fancy a drink? Oh, sorry, I can't. Uh, I've already got plans. Oh. Yeah, I'm meeting someone in town. Really? Yes. She's an old friend. Oh, well, in that case, there's, um, there's nothing else for it. I'll just have to uh, pay for your company. Hiya. Hi. Um, do you need a shampoo? A hair wash, sir. I give a fantastic Indian head massage. Well, that sounds delightful, but just a, um, a quick spruce up on this occasion. No worries. You fancy a brew? Oh, a coffee, if it's not too much trouble, my dear. My dear. <laughs> just for that, you're getting a cafetiere. Uh, be gentle with me. Please. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, I can't speak for this Nick chap, but in my experience, settling down is easy. It's finding the right woman willing to settle for you. That's the tricky bit. And have you? One lives in hope, my dear. One lives in hope. Right. All done. Come on. Oh, just as I was beginning to relax. Oh, if you really want to relax, get all to give you a manicure. Ooh. Talk about therapeutic. No kidding. The woman is a miracle worker. Natasha, shush. Oh, just a to... sales pitch like that. How can I resist? <laughs> Transport me to heaven. Oh, you heard the gentleman. Top up. Thank you very much. Excuse me, what do you think you're playing at? Come off it. You can't pretend you're not enjoying it. Anyway, I've always wanted to hold your hand in public. Oh, behave. <laughs> <laughs> Hiya, Gran. Oh, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> Please take a seat. Oh, you must be the dashing Nick. You say so? Well, the name's Lewis. Good to meet you. You too. Take a seat. Thank you. I've always had a soft spot for Nottingham. I managed the Regent Gentlemen's Club for a couple of years. Oh, heady days. The best blackjack table this side of Mayfair. The Regent? I can't say I know it. I believe they changed the name to something Egyptian sounding. You don't mean pharaohs. The very one. Of course, back in those days, the words gentleman's club actually meant something. So you're still in the casino business? Oh, no, not for a few years now. Oh, I'm what you might call semi-retired. I have always fancied trying that croupier like. Well, it's all in the digits, my dear. An ideal hand must be fine-boned and delicate, yet reassuringly strong. In fact, much like Audrey's here. Oh, please. Well, and on that note, I shall take my leave. No, you haven't had your second buff yet. I've monopolised enough for your time already. Right, what's the damage? No. Twenty-five pounds. Fifteen for the cut, ten for the manicure. Call it thirty. Come on. Good to meet you, and good luck with your new enterprise. Thank you. I'll see you out. Come on. Nice guy. I hope it takes one to know one. Oh, say Butterbell. <laughs> Hello, Nick Tilsley. No, I, I'm sorry, Carla, I can't. Look, I, I, I hope I didn't embarrass you too much in front of your grandson. You were charm personified as well, you know. Actually, I'm not particularly comfortable except... Nonsense. You're worth every penny. Just like me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you called in. It was a lovely surprise. Well, perhaps we can do it again. Yeah, perhaps. Um. As long as no money changes, hands, eh? I'd like that. To the next time. Bye, Audrey. Bye. You are well in there. <laughs> that good enough for you? Might even have to pay for this. <laughs> oh, here, let me. That's all right, fine. No, you're not. Oh, you've got a mark there. Oh! <laughs> Static. Come. That'll be 8.50, please. Uh, there's 10. Keep the change. Oh, I was going to suggest you buy me a drink by way of a tip, but that would be greedy of me now. Greed is good. So... I'll be in touch. <laughs> Hi, Rosie. <laughs> <sighs> Thanks for fitting me in, babe. No problem. Mmm, you look pleased with yourself. Well, it's not every day you get asked out. Oh, lucky you. Yeah. Have you got anyone on the go? <sighs> no. Not unless you count Graham. <laughs> oh, he were after me the other day. I nerve. You know what he told me? I'm premiership material, like I'm supposed to fall into his arms. Well, he said that to me as well. When? Well, this week. He said that no other woman around here would even make the subs bench. I think our little talent scout needs teaching a lesson. Yeah. Wow. Well, she really knows the tone, that one. Mm, I at you, Lady of the Manor. <laughs> hey, I bet you and Quinny have lots of girls after you when you go out of an evening. Some. You've still not had or said anything about your other mates there, or what your teachers are like. All right. Go on, then. What? We'll make some crack about me mum. Like, Gail in jail, or she had a tattoo yet. I won't wish what's happened to your family on my worst enemy, mate. Are you taking the mic? No, he's not. Must be awful. Don't know how I'd cope, but... 
Give her our best, yeah? Tell her that we don't believe a word of it. Yeah? Yeah, all right then. In a bit, yeah? I told you to tidy up last night, David. Yeah, well, I'm nearly done. Are you? Well, I can see a clump of Emily Bishop from here and she's not been in for a week. Yeah, well, it can't be hers then, can it? It is. I've been scrutinising that scalp for 20 odd years and every lump, bump, lock and follicle. Well, suddenly sweeping up doesn't seem so bad. Oh. Morning. Morning. How's the family? Well, he's a lazy article. Girls on remand, Sarah's abroad, but, uh, Otherwise, Nick's fine. Did he uh, mention me at all? We are meant to be meeting up, but I think he mislaid me number. <laughs> yeah, right. No, lovey. He hasn't said anything to me. I'm sorry. Oh! Hello, hello. Uh, what have we got here? Don't you dare open that for me. <laughs> it's not your little black book, is it, Grant? Oh, don't be ridiculous. It's a friend. They deserve privacy. Oh, this wouldn't be your uh, special friend by any chance. Oh. <laughs> Grow up the pair of you, good gracious. I'm really glad you're happy with it, sweetheart. Bye-bye. She's easily pleased. She looked nothing like Paris Hilton. Bancourt's travel lodge, maybe. Oh. Well. Hi. Oh, Rita, hi. I hope you didn't find me popping in early. Only I wanted to get it done before Norris goes off on his trip. Oh, going somewhere nice, is it? Yes, West Yorkshire. Oh. Though you'd think you were going to the trenches with the face Don't on him. <laughs> Coffee, no sugar. Uh, no, hang on, I'll get that. Uh, you two get off on your lunch. Oh, it's a bit early. Well, we're hardly rushed off our feet, are we? Go on, take another half hour. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm convinced. <laughs> See ya. Hurry up before I change my mind. <laughs> That's very generous of you. Well, you know what it's like. You just want a bit of peace and quiet sometimes. Oh, absolutely. I am going to enjoy it without his lordship under my feet. Do you know, Audrey, sometimes you're your own best companion. Mm. Uh, coffee, is it? Mm, lovely. Oh, sorry. Just a minute. Excuse me. Hello, Audrey's. Oh, hi. No, this is not a surprise. Honestly, Lewis, not at all. <laughs> oh, Norris is Heathcliff. I can't imagine him in breeches and riding boots. Well, I should think yourself lucky. Besides, happened the boots had pinched his bunny and some at rotten. <laughs> Talking of romantic figures. Yes, I wondered when you'd get round to that. Well, I couldn't help overhearing. You still seeing him? Mm, yeah, maybe later in the week. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want to reopen old wounds, especially while you're standing over me with a pair of scissors. <sighs> Rita, I know what you're going to say, but Lewis has been a rock for me throughout Gail's troubles. I'd have been lost without him. I don't doubt it. It's his job to be the man you want him to be. It doesn't mean he thinks anything of you. Yeah, well, uh, I'm afraid we're going to have to agree to differ. And make some up, wouldn't you? You know, to catch all the hair. Like them things on lawnmowers. Perhaps they could invent ride on clippers as well. Save me feet. <laughs> I suppose they'd have to shrink me though. Oh, you could at least try to look busy. Mrs. Tattersall's cancelled. Apparently a cat choked on a fur ball. Ooh. Yeah, so I'll go, me. I'll be sweeping up in here. Next thing. <clears throat> Gone. I live in hope. Oh, sweetheart, hello. Hi. <laughs> oh, hello, stranger. I was starting to give up on you. Oh, you know, it is a busy man, but I, uh... Couldn't keep away. I know. Bees and honeypots. Funny, I was thinking more flies and... David, it's... The... Sauce bottles, what? But we need to have a chat. I've lined up a barrister for Mum, but I wanted to talk to you first before I confirmed. Well, come through. You can save me from the accounts. Yeah, I can't. I've got a meeting. Um, what about my opinion? Well, I've taken that into account. You don't even know what it is yet. Yeah, but I know what it's worth. I'll see you in the pub later. Eight-ish? Ah, uh, great. I'm free tonight. Um, perhaps we could hook up as well. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sure. You'll have to work on your manoeuvres, Windass. I've seen that advert. Where the soldier goes wading up the river. 
Yeah. And I could be that baddie on the bank with his machine gun pointing at your head. <laughs> so what's the story then? Is AWOL an actual word? Like, is it in the dictionary? Dunno. Or is it just capital letters? Like I say, I dunno. Well, there's a word for when capital letters spell out like a proper word, isn't there? What, like laser? No, no. Laser's not capital letters. No, but I think every letter stands for something. Maybe it's radar's capital letters. Is your uncle all right with letting you stay at his? He's in my bay. Oh? Who'd have thought it, eh? You, local hero. Do you want a can? Yeah, go on then. Thanks. Hey, I've got some crisps at mine if you're hungry. Water, please. Are oh, you not having a drink? I oh, know, I'll have one later when we go into town. I'll have a mineral water too then. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, two mineral waters, please. Um, I'm just going to have a word with my grand. I'll bring him over. So, uh, let me tell you about this lawman. For Gail? Did you get him? Yeah, well, a mate of my mate works with a woman in his office, and he's agreed to represent Mum. Listen, don't you go feeling all humiliated now, just because he's left you on your own after you've been waiting over an hour for him. <laughs> I don't feel humiliated at all. Mm. He's got a lot on his plate. Mm. Look, Tasha. What? Two forty, that please, love. Oh, you're not. The thing I said to him is, let me see the wig. The better the wig, the more chance we've got. And this is a rule you've come up with, is it? Why do they wear those things? Uh, for having their photos taken, in case they end up on the back of a twenty-pound note. Uh, what makes this barrister so good? Do you remember that case a few months back of that woman accused of running a sister over? Well, that was in the Gazette. All the evidence said she did it, motive, forensics, everything. She walked free. What time are we going into town? Hmm? Well, the sister was carrying on with the husband and they'd just told the accused they were in love. Next thing you know, it's murder on the driveway. I should make a song about that. Oh, snake. Well, she mowed her down in plain view of the husband, allegedly. Are we going to get a bus or a taxi? When it says mowed down, I always think of him being run over by an actual lawnmower. You know, <laughs> I remember the case well because the sister, the deceased, was called Delilah. That's the one. A big fat woman. Well, she was a beast. I mean, Channel 5, a beast. Hang on. Hello? Ah, Michael Tinkler, start talking. Tonight? Yeah, about half an hour. OK, cheers. Uh, an old client of mine wants to throw some work my way. I'm off down Bellevue. Can I touch a tag along? No, no. It's oh, fine. We'll do something tomorrow night, I promise. Uh, Taraga and uh, by Rita. Sorry about this gorgeous. Don't take after his granddad much, does he? Far from it, I'm afraid. Well, he's got one more chance, and then that's it. He's blown it. So he angry at Joe or the police? You know, I wish his plan had worked. That'd have been the last we saw of him either way. No, I doubt that. It'd have turned up at some point shouting the odds. It might have got even rougher. What about Tina? What about her? Is she all right? I'm like I can. Well, it's all a big mess, isn't it? Well, says you. The deserter. The dessert rat. <laughs> the desert rats. I'd not to do with deserting if that's what you mean. No, yeah, didn't they? They beat Rommel in North Africa. Check out the military history on Windass. Did they test you? Mate, it's not a game where I'll be going. It's all right. I'm on your side. You wouldn't catch me risking my neck for queen and country. They won't have you. The army's for men. Yeah, well, you're the one who stood in my kitchen. Well, I mean, I'm stood in my kitchen too, but I shouldn't be back at the barracks doing target practice. Look, I don't feel great about all this, all right? I was proud to be there. I'm not proud to be here. What's the go back? Are you missing her? What, who? Ah, that's what this is about, is it? It's not about fear. It's that you can't live to be without your precious mum who tucks you in at night. Oh, yeah, this coming from you. You'd still be on the breast if she let you. Yeah? Yeah. Listen, you can slag me off, yeah, but don't slag me mum off. Sorry, was I treading on your toes? You know, the son you've been, 
No wonder she went round the twist marrying all those nutters. Hey, I've just taken you in, yeah? I've given you crisps, and all you can do is put the boot in. Let go of me, David. Oh, what? I'm gonna show me your new moves. Try me. Look, just give me your word, all right? This stays between us. You haven't seen me. Agreed? Agreed. Are you, uh, all right? I'm fine. Is there anything, um, I can do? Oh, something I'd like to talk about. Oh, you can't begin to understand, Roy. Nobody could. Even so, I, I, th I think going home, perhaps, I, I, I lie down. Gary, it's me. And she just burst into tears in the cafe. Completely lost it. What happened? That Michelle Connor complained about a toast. And that's it? Yeah, precisely. If you're winding me up... Look, I just thought you should know. That's all. How long are you staying at your Uncle Len's? He's back tomorrow. Got to move on. Where to? What's it to you? I just thought I'd check up to see how all this army training had paid off. And I'm planning ahead instead of running around like an endless chicken. Yeah, funny man. Look, if you've gone airwall because you're scared of me, it's none of my business, but you need to realise what it's doing to your man. Who are you calling scared? Look, just let her know you're all right. I can't. You've got to. I'm sorry. Just keep an eye out for you. You spoke to Mum? Yeah, she rang earlier. Told her about the new barrister? Yeah, of course. His reputation, his successes. Yeah, don't worry, I'll let her know it. we're all out of you that we got him. I want the best for her, not the credit. Graham, this is a surprise. Not difficult to surprise, then. I was being sarcastic. Very underrated sarcasm. Wasted if your target is too dense to understand. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, tonight you're off out with Natasha. So? Not serious, though. Why are you two so interested? Of, um, betting there'll be wedding bells by end of year. Impossible. <laughs> well, she's a borderline bunny baller, that one, you know. And once she gets the claws in here, you've had it. I bet she's booking church by end of week. I don't think so. Yeah, you don't want to cross her, she can turn. Like, I don't intend to. One second, she's drinking a flaming Sambuca. That's a drink, by the way, not a swear word. Next minute, you're wearing it. Eyebrows all singed, not a good look. See you later. I'm sure Natasha will find your descriptions of her highly amusing. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, oh, where are you going? You're looking where you're going. I bet you did that on purpose. No, uh, I was texting, didn't you see? Yeah. Typical of you, that. Never miss the opportunity to do somebody some harm, do you? Look, I'm sorry, Mrs. Winnett. It really was an accident. Are you all right? No thanks to you. Look, I meant today at Roy's. I was there. Our Gary turned his life round since you've got him locked up, prepared to put his neck on the line for his country. Yeah, I know. I and I know making you proud, it, it meant a lot to him. Then why's he gone missing? Missing? From training, gone AWOL. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, uh, I'm, I'm sure he had his reasons for bailing out. But if he told me, talked to me, we could have sorted it. I mean, what gets into you lads, David? I mean, you like you are. And Gary, joining up, he made me so proud and now he's gone and done this. I mean, what on earth goes through your heads? Okay, I get the message. 
Oh, hi. Uh... I thought at first I'd um, catch you in here with Carla. Could have even lived with that, but no. You're hiding away, feet up, bottle of lager in your hand. I look in the mirror, and you know what? I see someone who's pretty, bubbly, good form, the sort of girl I'd like to take on a date. I do have other options, you know. Okay, maybe Graham Proctor isn't everyone's cup of tea, but he wouldn't spend our first date talking to his grandma and then humiliate me by doing a run-up before I even turn up. Everyone in that pub is laughing at me, thanks to you. You uh, want to do this another time, Nick? Uh, I was. I still am on a conference call uh, with clients. Um, I'll get those figures to you on your desk by the morning. Cheers. Thanks, Nick. We'll leave you two to make up. Good night. Good night. I'm sorry. I mean, really sorry. <laughs> it's my fault. I should have explained. When I heard that voice... I... Hey, maybe we could go on a foursome. Me and Carla, you and Gray. Oh, don't. Mm -hmm. Carla should have taken the call. As our best clients, you got held up out of town. I had to step in. Sorry. I think it's me who should be apologising. No, no, no. They'll stick with Underworld now. If only to tease the hell out of me for the next six months. <laughs> oh, is that it? Work done? Sorry, yeah. Uh, no. Uh, not a problem. I'll, um, I'll leave you do it. <laughs> I'll make it up to you tomorrow night. I promise. OK. Before you go... Oh? Do you remember the time you found us searching through the bins outside that fella's flat? Oh, yeah. Minging, I blanked that out. I know, I thought you'd have me on. But, you know, some guys, they buzz off that kind of attention. What's this? Oh, nothing. Just... Natasha. Um, the restraining order's been lifted now, though, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I prefer my women to play a little bit more cool. <laughs> well, I think Natasha does cool, based on her performance in the factory last night. Hot and bothered, was she? Let's just say she took the conference call to new and dizzy heights. No, Keen's good. Makes a change. Sure it does. It's honest. I'm looking forward to seeing it tonight. Should be a laugh. It's a fine, thick head of hair for a man his age. It's one of his best features, where it's fab to run your fingers through. <laughs> what with all that hairspray, dream on. Actually, David, he doesn't use a lot of products. There must be a low light. Oh, j you will get rid of those if someone comes in, I hope. Good one's mine. Very subtle, but they've got to be. No one's that blessed. He really is. Mm. Do you know what I dreamt about last night? Mm -hmm. Hey, Grant. Need a sign above the door. No politics, no religion, and strictly no describing dreams. Oh, shush. What, darling? Doing mix. Oh. I woke up just before the final rinse. I am dying to get my hands on it again. Yeah, you got to be in the same room first. I'm seeing him tonight. Thank you very much. Yeah, right. And Lewis doesn't wear lifts in his shoes. Oh. I really swear she saw someone behind the curtains. Too many wine guns. What if she's right? Well, it wouldn't have been a burglar, would it? It'd be not in that flat worth robbing. No, Tina, what if she's not gone to a man's after all? Oh, you two, you're like a couple of fishwives on my time. Um, that's a tad sexist, if you don't mind me saying, Ox. Emily is parched. I'm not. And I'm... I have got a European towel mountain growing by the hour. What's eating her? Don't know. But our best mate like a banana. Um, let me just uh, leave you with one thought. Oh, must you? You don't miss your water till your wells run dry. Just come back when you need a haircut, not before. Now, tea and then towels, in that order. Yes, my commandant. Oh. What are you doing? Avoiding you. Why? Well, not you exactly, just another ear bashing. Am I that bad? Not usually, no, just other than yesterday. <sighs> I'm sorry, love. 
Anybody who looks at me the wrong way these days seems to end up in the firing line. Oh, well, I won't have to avoid you forever, just once all this gaddy business is over. Once he's been booted out of the army in disgrace, you mean, or found floating in the canal. That won't happen. Gaddy's got more sense. <sighs> he's sleeping rough. It's dog eat dog out there. Again, Gaddy's a Rottweiler. Hey, don't cry, please. I'm not. <sighs> Sorry, um. Got me pinny. <laughs> Stay to me. Buying food, cooking food, serving food up to folk. I can't keep anything down. These trackies used to dig in round the waist. Gary's fine, right? I know he is. <sighs> That's what everyone tells me. But when it's your own lad, your only lad, it's the not knowing that <laughs> cripples you. I'm not just saying it. I know he is, for sure. Look, I promised I wouldn't let on. Psst, stuff promises. Well, it's not that he don't care about you. He's trying to protect you. Cut to the chase, lad. Well, he hasn't been sleeping rough. He's OK, at least for now. Where? Round and about. Weatherfield? Manchester? Weatherfield. And is he safe? He has been. He's a head worker, this one. Could be spinning as any old yarn just to watch us squirm. No, I've seen him. Is it money? Look, I've given him food. Here. If you don't believe he trusts me, listen. Hello? That's him. Give... Yeah. How long have you been watching us Whoa. sweat? Hey. You're... Where is you're he? Don't give me up a tail. Look, look, he's moving on today. Tell me, where is he? Lens. I don't believe it. The water's still warm. We've only missed him by minutes. Oh, seconds, minutes, hours. You don't matter, we've missed him. God knows where he'll run to now. At least here he was safe. Oh, come on. Ridiculous. You've got a radio crackling away there. Use it. I'm saying what? Say hello. Have you seen my son? Mm. Well, that's my son on the run for any coppers who are listening. Are you crackers? Maybe I am. Can you blame me? My son's been missing for, well, what feels like years, but the minute we get within a sniff of him, he disappears. Now, tell me I've been watching too much CSI. You've been watching too much CSI? But well, that smacks of a tip-off. We should have sussed the minute he rang Gary's phone. Well, you're right about that, David Platt. He's played us like a violin. <laughs> He's helped us. If you want to point the finger, point it fair and square at Gary. Eddie, up the alley, it's him. Are you sure? Yes, pull over! <laughs> Dead man, Platt. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Oh. I'm sorry, Mum. I'm sorry. Where is she? Who? 
Uh, Natasha. Oh, she's left early to buy herself a frock. Oh, whoops. Oh, spot the surprise. A frock for tonight. Oh, Nick, no, no, you can't let her down again. I've got to drive to Coventry. Look, this is three nights running. You'll give the girl a complex. <sighs> you are a rat. You are. She'll never forgive you. No one will forgive you after that. I'll just get her some flowers. She'll be like putty in your hands. <sighs> Thank you. My cash bag, a couple of eights of heads, my good blue jacket, the air freshener, air <sighs> freshener, I ask you. Street rats! They'd have the pennies off a dead man's eyes! Didn't get your furs, did they? A few quid, no matter. I'll pay you back, yeah? I'll tell you how you'll pay me back. Oh, please, love! You're gonna get home, get a bath, get a proper meal inside you, and then you're gonna tell us how you got into this mess in the first place. <sighs> Rosie. She's got the body, she's got the face, but she's just so light. Me, me, me. One high maintenance, hottie. Well, if you like that sort of thing. Whereas, it can't have escaped your attention that there's no I in Graham. You know, I'm a low ego, zen kind of guy. Would she bleed me dry? Most deaf. Would it be worth it for the ride? Tina. Peanuts for the monker. Three weeks worth of windows, now consider yourself sacked. Well, what have I done? I know that you've been bitching about me on the street. Well, it'll be the last time that you do. You all right? Tina! Tina, Tina. Tina, love. Tina. Should we give her the Heimlich manoeuvre? That's something you do when you've got something stuck in your throat, you nutty. You don't know anything about first aid. Do you know what? Because you won't pay for me to go on the course. If she dies, Ash... She won't die. Look, she's waking up already. What's going on? You've collapsed, love. Oi, it's OK now. You're with friends. OK, we won't get a chair. I don't need a chair. <laughs> right, sit down. I'm not going anywhere. I'm fine. All right, have, uh, have we got any brand here? No. Tea then, sweet strong tea. I don't like strong tea. Weak tea then, and then I'm taking you to the medical centre. No way. Oh, you, oh, no, oh, no, Tina, no. Tina, oh. Tina, you've collapsed. You need to get yourself checked out. You keep a guard, I'll make the tea. It's all right, Tina. Are you all right, Tina? I'm great, thanks. She's fainted. Oh dear, oh well, just sit quiet there. Eh? Ashley, now, uh, did you do that river beef? I did, I, and it's a belter. One week tea, no shot. Where's Tina? What? Oh, she must have left. When? Oi! I told you to keep a lookout. Honestly, I turned my back for one second. Being bullied. What? In the army? No. <laughs> well, if anything, it'd be him doing the bullying. Yeah, cheers for that. I find it all highly fishy. Uh, get off. I can't believe you let her get away. I can't believe you went after her. Well, did you see her? She was manic, hair all over the place. She was rude. I would have chucked her out, she hadn't fainted. It's not as if she's a good customer. Ah, that's what it always boils down to with you, innit? Profit and loss. She only came in here to tell you to keep this out. She'd have gone straight home, she hadn't fainted. Fainted? Exactly, you don't just faint. I've had many people fainting here over the years. Why? The heat? The heaving crowds? I don't think so. Oh, well, you've done quite a bridge trade this morning as it happens. And I don't like your tone. Hey? If a customer come in here now and heard me and you talking, they think it was you that were the boss. I'm naturally assertive. You don't show me enough respect, never mind Tina. You're just as bad. Well, I'm 
Sorry, sir. I'll keep my gob shot from now on. You just treat me like I'm your employer and you show a bit of respect. Happen your superiors will get to the bottom of all this. No chance, they've got better things to do. Funny that. Because there's a bloke in an army uniform heading for the door now. Yeah, yeah. You serious? Unless I've started recruiting door to door. Right, I'm not in. You haven't seen me, all right? Hang on, I'm not lying. Oh, please, Dad, they can't know I'm here, yeah? But they're, they're like ministers of the crown or knights of the realm. I don't want Gary getting court martialed. I should have thought about that before he'd done a bunk. Well, you've a lot of things, Eddie Windass, but I never had you down as a grass. Uh, I'm sorry to disturb you, Mr. Windass. I'm Sergeant Major Keith Partridge. I'm looking for your son. I got it. Is where you're not into. Who your son might be? No. I mean, he's never been good at staying in touch, especially since he joined you lot. This must happen all the time, though, doesn't it? These young kids, they don't have any stickability. Should we do something? Contact the police? <clears throat> I mean, where do you think he is? Recruits do go away well from time to time, yeah, but not usually such bright lads as your Gary. Right. It's early days, but his CO reckons he's got the makings of a fine soldier. Hard working, practical, good head on his shoulders, and a very good army career in prospect. So we settled him well? Very well. Until he absconded. So maybe there is something making him unhappy. Something that you don't know about. Has he said to you that he's unhappy? No. Now he knows he's in trouble, he won't want to go face the music. Put a ball through a window once, didn't see him for a week. We know the guys have second thoughts, it's only natural. So as it stands, he's looking at a fairly light punishment. But the longer he leaves it, when he does get in touch, try and talk some sense into him, will you? He hasn't listened to anything I've had to say since he got out of nappies. <laughs> All the same, it'd be a real pity to see a good career go down the swanny. So oh, the plot thickens. In fact, it's so thick you could stand a spoon in it. Oh, what's going on, Gary? Hey? That bloke was singing your praises, saying how well you'd settled in, that you'd all the makings of a good soldier. Yeah, in front of you. Well, why would you lie? Well, it's messing with your head. I'm trying to put a positive gloss on things so I'll go back and face the music. The only one playing games here is you. All right, so you believe him over me now? Got it in one. He said you were really good. Why would he make that up? I never said that I couldn't do it. I said that it won't for me. And there's a million well-paid jobs you could do instead. I saw they were looking for astronauts in the paper today. I oh, do you not fancy that, eh? What do you want to be, a brain surgeon? No, I'm happy being a loser, like father, like son. But this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. You can't pass it up. Yes, I can, Dad. And do you know why? Because it's my life, my career and my decision. Ambulance, please. Uh, hang on a minute. Um, I, I think she's coming round. Uh, I, I'll ring back in a minute. What are you doing here? Saving your life. Tina, have you taken anything? What? Um, um, pills, overdose, I don't know. Are you sure? Yes. Well, so why are you unconscious on the living room floor? And why did you, why did you pass out in the shop today? Oi, Tina, what is going on? Phoning you 
Yeah, well, my mobile must have been turned off. I've just had to leave a client in a restaurant to come and find you. I told you, I've got a prior engagement. Those samples are more important than your love life. Not so much of an opinion. Besides, you can't send me halfway to London on a Friday afternoon. Nick, I need those samples. On a Friday night, you need to sort out your life-work balance. Huh? Didn't take you long to swoop, did it? The samples are on their way by motorcycle courier. <sighs> You'll get your greasy mitts on them by nine this evening. So your Friday night won't be boring after all. Samples of what? Ah, oh, it doesn't matter. Come on, let's get out of here. Who's out the window seat? <sighs> I thought you were out. I was, but now I'm in. What's she doing here? What? Well, just because Mum's away, I don't mean you can treat the place like an hotel. <laughs> it's not a very um, posh hotel. Does anybody want a cuppa? I am not sitting here with him gawping. I know, but what can we do? Um, you and David don't share a room, do you? Uh, no. Good. Bring the wine. <laughs> Night, David! How did you get in? Brute force. You broke in? Well, luckily you and Sarah being here only put a cheap front door on, so I huffed and I puffed. You've got no right to break in. Mind, I doubt you'll sell the place anyway with the state it's in. You meant to put out flowers, welcome prospective buyers with the scent of coffee, not leftover food and overflown bin. It's got nothing to do with you. Well, I say leftover food. I get the impression you've not been eating very much, have you? Will you go, please? What are you going to do? Get me out. You've better got the strength to move. I'll call the police. When did you last eat? What? I'm working on a theory of why you keep fainting and why you look so terrible. Do you mind if I um, check your fridge? Yes. What? <clears throat> oh! Surprise, surprise. Empty. Been eating a lot of takeaways. Not that it's any of your business. Cupboard. Empty. And another. Oh. Hello. Tin of soup. Mushroom. Result. Um, where do you, uh, keep your pans? What do I pan for? To warm this through. Or you can drink it from the can cold. <laughs> Either way. It's going inside you. I found a couple of fig rolls in the back of the cupboard as well. I'm not hungry. 1,500 calories a day. That's what the female body requires. Never mind what any of those mad diets or websites say. I'm not on a diet. I blame those celebrity magazines. How I lost a stone in five days. You know, people should just be happy as they are. I'll never be happy again. You will, actually. As soon as you eat the soup and the biscuits. <laughs> Prince among biscuits, the fig roll. <laughs> right, I'll make you a deal. Eat the soup and I'll go. Half of it. <sighs> you stop gawping at me. I'm worried that if I turn my back, you'll tip it in a plant pot or something. It's quite nice, actually. I don't normally like mushroom. Mm, never made it into my top five. It's not up there with tomato or oxtail. Oxtail? Mm. Yeah. But for my money, 
Scotch broth knocks all tin soups into a cocked hat, especially in winter. <laughs> My nan says it's like a two bar fire in a tin. I don't want any more. If you make me eat it, I'll be sick. Yeah, well, I'm guessing you'll just be sick as soon as I walk out of that door anyway. I'm not bulimic. And I'm not on some weird diet. Good. Because people go on a diet to look good. But you, mate, you look awful. I haven't got any eating disorder. That's not what's wrong. Yeah, well, you've got a fainting disorder. You know, you keeled over twice in one day. I can't stop thinking about my dad. I can't believe I'm never going to see him again. Hey, Tina, mate. And I know I should be starting to come to terms with it by now, and I know I should upset the fact that he's gone, but I can't. I can't move on. He's just with me all day, every day, this horrible, empty feeling. And I just miss him so much. <laughs> I don't want to eat because I don't want to live.